Genesis 37, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Now look down at verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, Joseph, says, Even before he came near unto them, they, his brothers, conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, they stripped him, Joseph of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lift up their eyes, and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh." and his brethren were content. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Help us now, enlighten our minds and our hearts to thy truth, and God, edify us and encourage us tonight. And Lord, use the message tonight to help us to be able to help somebody else. And Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. Forty-two generations from Abraham... To Jesus. And 42 times in the life of Joseph, he is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Joseph tonight and those types. I'd like to. Uh, I preached one time on those coats, a coat of many colors. I preached uh, uh, colors that might have been in there and what they represent. There's so much preaching in the life of Joseph. Uh, but I do want to give you a summary of his life. We find, first of all, Joseph here in the, in the pit in verse number 24. It says, And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. We find he is forsaken by his very brothers and placed into a pit. We know the Lord Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. Uh, I'm glad it didn't end there. It said, But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become uh, uh, the sons of God. Uh, uh, that's why uh, uh, Israel has suffered all they have for the last 2,000 years because they rejected the Lord Jesus uh, when he came the first time. Uh, uh, we find Joseph in the pit uh, forsaken by his brethren. Now, we find that they sell him to the Ishmaelites as a slave. We know that uh, Judas sold the Lord Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, uh, they sell him to the Ishmaelites. He becomes their slave. Uh, they get down there to Egypt, uh, and the first thing that happens, they sell him to a man named Potiphar. Uh, 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 we find that he's in Potiphar's uh, uh, possession. Uh, Potiphar knows, notices the, the hand of the Lord's on Joseph. Uh, and so Potiphar doesn't make him a slave. Uh, 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 he makes him a house slave and puts him over all of his household. Uh, uh, so there he is. Uh, uh, he's got the blessings of God on his life, even though uh, 
he's been sold out by his brethren. Uh, but Potiphar's wife uh, looks at him and he's fair to look upon. Uh, and she desires to have him. Uh, and he, de- uh, uh, he refuses uh, 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 to take his master's wife. Uh, and he refuses uh, uh, to defile himself before God. Uh, and she lays hold on him and he runs out. Uh, and she grabbed onto him and, uh, and as he runs out, uh, he ran out of his coat and she had his coat. Uh, when Potiphar comes uh, home, uh, here she is mad that he did not uh, uh, allow her uh, uh, to have her ways with him. Uh, so she lies to Potiphar uh, and said that Joseph tried uh, to force himself on him. Uh, so then uh, uh, we find he's at Potiphar's house and he faces false accusations. His brethren forsake him. He's at Potiphar's house and now he's facing false accusation. So Potiphar puts him in prison. He's in prison for a long time. While he's there, he gets confronted with two other fellows. The first one is a butler. It's Pharaoh's butler. It ticked off Pharaoh. And Pharaoh throws him off into prison. Hmm? And so he meets Benson. If you all remember that show. Well, Pharaoh's missing his butler, so the butler gets out of prison. Now, the butler tells Joseph, uh, said, if I ever get out of here, I'm going to put in a good word for you. Well, the butler gets out, and he forgot all about Joseph. Next guy shows up on the scene is Pharaoh's baker. So we got Buddy the cake boss. He had Benson and Buddy down there with him, huh? So the baker's there. And the same thing. He says, uh, if I get out of here, I'll put in a good word for you. He gets out of prison. He forgets all about Joseph. So you find him in Potiphar's house, false accusations. He's in the pit. He's, he's been for, uh, uh, forsaken of his brethren. Now he's in prison. He's forgotten by Buddy and Benson. Then there's a problem. Pharaoh has a terrible dream. And he puts out a big offer to anybody who can come and interpret this dream. All the soothsayers, all the wise men of Egypt, nobody can interpret this dream. What clicks with Buddy and Benson? Hey, we met a guy down there in prison. He's able to interpret dreams. So they bring forth Joseph. And he was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. He predicted the famine. And so he told him, you better put out some some food for the next seven years there's a great famine coming well the Lord then blesses him in Pharaoh's sight and Pharaoh puts him over all the kingdom can I say uh, when he's uh, now in his old age his brothers have to come to Egypt begging for bread and he preserves his brothers and he shows forgiveness so we see a tremendous summary in, of Joseph's lives. I mean, you read the next six, seven, eight chapters, you'll get all that that I just gave you. But here's my question. His brothers turn on him, throw him in a pit. Slaves take him down some to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife lies on him, stoned in prison. Then them two guys that he buddies up with, they forget him. Do you think Joseph ever got hurt? Miss Jackie, it's one thing if a co-worker mistreats you. It's another thing if your brothers and sisters forsake you. And you've heard me say that you can defend anything but a lie. He went to jail over a lie. Mm -mm. You think he got hurt? I mean, if you read the entire account, nowhere does he get a bad attitude. But he did get hurt. He's made of flesh. He got hurt. Can I say something about Joseph? The Lord was with Joseph, but the Lord did not indwell Joseph. You do understand if you're a believer, the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. The Holy Ghost did not live inside Joseph. In your lap, you have a copy of God's Word. Joseph didn't. You think he got hurt? I think he got hurt. I want to preach for just a little while tonight on being hurt. Being hurt. Now, I want to caution you something. 
a bruise can lead to something getting broken. And brokenness can lead to bitterness. Here this man did not get bitter, nor was he broken, yet he was hurt. Brother Clint, I've seen people stub their toe in Christianity and quit on God. I've seen people get upset at somebody at church and it ruined their life. This guy went to a pit, then he went to slavery, then he went to prison. I mean, we're talking for years. No hope. But he's got a good attitude. It does matter how we deal with hurt. Hmm? Can I say first of all in being hurt, there's the reality of hurt. You might as well just accept it right now. You're going to get hurt. Yes, sir. I don't care who you are. Don't care if you've got a, a blue suit and a red cape and a yellow S on your chest. You're going to get hurt. Hmm? Amen. Don't matter how young. Don't matter how old. You're going to face some hurt. Mark her down. When Adam and Eve chose to sin, one of the things that came to this world because of sin is hurt. Yes, sir. You may get hurt feelings. You may be hurt mentally by mental abuse. You may be hurt physically. You may be hurt by sickness. But friend, you're going to face some hurt. Amen. The reality is we are going to face some hurt. Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. And part of that trouble is you're going to get hurt. Kids, listen to me. At school, somebody's going to hurt you. Somebody's going to hurt your feelings. Somebody's going to choose uh, 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 somebody over you to be their friend or their boyfriend or their girlfriend. And you just might as well face it. Don't give me that look, Colton. One of these days, you're going to like girls. One of these days, you're going to send a little girl a little note. Do you like me? Yes, no. Circle the one, huh? It's going to happen, bro. Huh? Hmm? It's going to happen. And when it does, I'm going to say, na 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 boo boo, told you so. As long as they check yes, it's wonderful. But if they check no, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get hurt when the teacher wants a, a, a volunteer and she chooses somebody else. You're going to get hurt when you try out for the play and somebody gets the role you wanted. You're going to get hurt when you try out for the ball team and you don't make it. Hmm? Can I say adults? Happens to us too. You're going to get hurt when you apply for that promotion and you don't get it. You're going to get hurt when you apply for them hours and you don't get them. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. And you're even going to get wounded. Many times by the very ones that ought to love you. Sure. If you're not careful, you're going to get hurt in church. It's a reality. Sure. You're going to face some hurt. That don't mean you ought to like it. That don't mean you ought to live uh, uh, with bubble wrap all around you, being afraid to go anywhere. Sure. I might get hurt. You are going to get hurt. Might as well understand that. Sure. Amen. But I'd rather put myself out there and do what I'm supposed to do and get hurt doing that than hiding in a corner somewhere because you're still going to get hurt. Amen. Hmm? The reality is you're going to get hurt. Can I say secondly, you've got to understand how to react to being hurt. If you look at the life of Joseph, you do not find him lashing out anywhere at any time, even though he's hurt. Can I say this? When it comes to how you're to react about being hurt, I heard a man say this. This is very important. Don't let hurt hurt you. Let me say that again. Don't let hurt hurt you you're going to get hurt but don't let that hurt hurt you 
You say, preacher, what are you trying? You just said I'm going to get hurt. How's it not going to hurt me? You're not understanding. Don't let it hurt your walk with God. Don't let your hurt affect your walk with Jesus. Hmm. The last thing that you ever want to do is let hurt affect your testimony for Jesus Christ. You know the Bible. The Bible says your written epistles known and read of all men. People you work around. People you're related to. Uh, know you're a Christian. They know you're a member of this church. They know you go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, 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 they know you've made the testimony. You love Jesus. Uh, when you get hurt, don't let your hurt affect that in their eyes. Amen. Can I say? When you are hurt and you still live for Jesus, it shows them what you have is real. Amen. Don't let your hurt hurt you. It amazes me when folks get hurt, you can't count on them. I want to tell you something. When you get hurt, the biggest, I mean, it ought to be obvious. Everybody ought to see you sitting in the lap of Jesus when you get hurt. Sure. When people get hurt, Oh, they want to whine and cry and complain. You don't find Joseph doing any of that either. Can I help you what the lost world does when they get hurt? They whine and cry and complain. You know what a Christian I say? By the grace of God, I am what I am. Hmm. Huh? God told Paul after he prayed three times to remove his thorn in the flesh, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Huh? He says, uh, 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 my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Sometimes hurt comes from God to cause us to depend on God more. Don't let your hurt hurt you. Don't let it hurt your walk with God. Don't let it hurt your witness for God. You know, there is nothing worse than somebody who claims they're saved and they live like the devil, they act like the devil, and they whine like the devil. There's nothing worse than that. Hmm. And you all know people that claim to be saved and their life is no more Christian than the man in the moon. Amen. And can I say it is terrible when somebody claims to be a Christian, claims to go to church, and something happens in their life and they revert back to their old ways. Amen. What kind of testimony is that? That tells, you, tells the world the grace of God is not stronger than your hurt. Don't let it hurt your witness or your walk. Don't let it hurt your worship of God. Amen. You ought to worship God whether you feel like it or not. Because right. He is worthy. I remember preacher Homer Smith, he's in heaven now. I remember one time him telling a story. He used to preach and he'd say, sometimes you just got to shout on credit. Yeah. You don't feel like shouting? You're really empty, don't have anything to shout about, but Jesus is so good, you just shout on credit. Because one day you're going to feel like shouting, you're just going to get, you're paying it forward. Huh? Well, he said one time him and his wife uh, uh, was coming out of a meeting, they're driving down the interstate, and uh, he said it was a monsoon. It was pouring, uh, and he got a flat tire. He said he's out there, and he's having a hard time getting the tire off the car and getting it jacked up, and his wife's sitting in there, and he's out there grumbling. And she rolled down the window and said, Shout on that, Dr. Smith! He said he got to thinking about the blessings of God and where God found him and how good God had been to him. He said he had a spell right there in the middle of the monsoon uh, with a flat tire just shouting her out because uh, God had been good to him. Sure. Don't let your hurt hurt your worship of God. Amen. Hmm? There's some people, when everything's not just right, you can tell when they come in the house of God. Come in walking on their lower lip, come in lowering a snake's belly, come in pooch mouth, coming in whining, crying, and complaining around. How does God get glory out of that? Amen, Pastor. Mm. I want to tell you what, the blood of Jesus Christ that saved me, not only saved me, it secured me and it sustained me. And regardless of how I feel or what I'm going through, He is worthy of my worship. That man just buried his father today. He's, oh, he's, he's shouting me out louder than anybody here tonight. Huh? Why? Because Jesus is greater in our circumstances. I'm just saying, you're going to get hurt, but don't let your hurt hurt you. Sad day when 
after you recover from your hurt, you got to go around and apologize to your co-workers and your family and everybody because you was a sorry Christian during your hurt. Amen. And guess what? It'll take you years to regain their trust. Amen. Don't let your hurt hurt you. Can I say this? There's the responsibility of your hurt. Don't let your hurt hurt others. You know, when you're hurt, a natural response is for you to take it out on somebody else. Yeah. Have you ever heard the old proverb that a dog will bite the hand that feeds it? Yeah. When he's hurt, he will. Yeah. Don't let your hurt hurt others. Yeah. When you're hurting, recognize you're hurting, but don't let your natural man override your spiritual man. Don't hurt somebody else. Hmm? Did not the Lord say, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord? Sure. He doesn't need our help. Sure. He knows how to handle every situation. Don't let your hurt hurt others. Hmm? If you're in a bad mood, go get along with God somewhere and get rid of the bad mood and then come out and be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Don't let your hurt right. cause you to hurt somebody else. Again, the Lord may have put that thorn in your life because He wants to humble you. May have put that thorn in your life because He wants to use you. May have put that thorn in your life so you can learn to depend on Him more so one day you can help somebody in the midst of their hurt. Sure. But don't let your hurt hurt others. Can I say the first response or reaction is usually the wrong one? Mm -mm. Amen. If you're like me, you get hurt. If you don't check your tongue, you're liable to say something that'll hurt somebody else. Be better keep your mouth shut. Amen. Mm -mm. You're going to get hurt. Don't let your hurt hurt you. And don't let your hurt hurt others. There's the reality of the hurt. There's the uh, reaction to hurt. There's the responsibility with hurt. Don't let hurt hurt others. But then there's the revenue of hurt you need to use your hurt to help someone else in Joseph's life in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20 he says but as for you talking to his brothers ye thought evil against me but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive the revenue of hurt is for you to use your hurt to help somebody else. Amen. The next time you get hurt, if you get your mind off of yourself and look around to somebody else that is in need and reach out to try and help them, it'll help your hurt. Amen. The problem is, Brother Ray, when we get hurt, all we see is us and our hurt. Hmm? We're Elijah under a juniper tree. Woe is me, God. I'm the only one left. Just kill me. Because hmm? we're hurt. Because we look inwardly. Because we're hurting. Nobody likes hurt. Nobody signs up for hurt. We don't want hurt. We want mountaintops. We want blessing. We want ice cream with whipped cream with the cherry on top. We want it all. But sometimes we face hurt. When you face hurt, fight against the reaction of looking inwardly and looking at yourself and looking at your hurt and looking at all the problem and look outwardly to somebody that's got a lot worse than you. Hmm? Those that have had your heart broken. It doesn't make much sense. But the old adage is, it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. Yep. Well, tell that somebody's just had their heart ripped out of their chest. Right. Hmm? Amen. Yep. But it is better to have known love than to have never known love. Better to have known love and lost than to have never lo known love. But next time your heart's ripped out, why don't you look up and see one that's never hurt you? 
One that's loved you with an everlasting love. Sure. One who is love. Sure. And then after you look to him and he puts that bomb of Gilead in that ripped out heart, then look outwardly and you'll find a lot of people sure. that need some help and need somebody to care about them. Hmm? My dear friends, it's so easy to focus on our hurt. Amen. And when we do, we lose sight of the ministry in hurt. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, the called according to His purpose. Amen. It's not always easy. When you're hurting, the last thing you want to do is be a blessing to somebody. You want somebody to be a blessing to you. But can I help you? The secret in God's economy, did not Paul said his ways are mysterious? The secret to how God works is when you're hurting and you reach out to be a help to somebody else, that's when you do get the blessing. He dumps it on you. Because it's more blessed to give than to receive, even when you're hurting. Somebody once said, give till it hurts. You'll just see how good God is. There is a revenue in your hurt. And the revenue of the hurt is by being good to somebody else. Amen. You yourself will receive a blessing. Hmm? Use your hurt. To help someone else. Then I thought about this. I mean, there's the reality of hurt, the reaction to hurt, responsibility of hurt, the revenue of hurt, but then there's the reward of hurt. When you are hurt, and when you're hurt for doing right and doing good, that is when you are most identified with the Lord Jesus Himself. Amen. He knew no sin. Yet he became sin. There was no guile in his mouth. There was nothing that he ever did wrong. Even Pilate, when he judged him, said, I find no fault in this man. Amen. Yet listen to what Isaiah said about him. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Uh, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. That chapter goes on to say, It pleased God to bruise him. He was a man of sorrows. Jesus Christ only knew hurt. And yet, we're saved because of his hurt. Amen. The reward of hurt is when we handle hurt properly, we are the most Christ-like we will ever be. Christian means Christ-like. Yes, when you are hurt and a person of sorrows, you are more like Christ than any other time in your life. Can I say this? A scar shows two things. It shows you've been hurt. But it also shows you've been healed of the hurt. Too many people want their wounds to remain open sores. They want to live in their hurt. When you live in your open wound, you're no benefit to yourself, you're no benefit to God, Amen. and you're no benefit to anybody else. Nobody likes hanging out with a perpetual sore. Amen. Infections come from that stuff. Hmm? Don't let the hurt of yesterday stand in the way of healing available today. Use your hurt to prove to the world that Jesus is greater 
than all our diseases. With his stripes we are healed. Choose to live in the healing that God provides rather than the hurt that comes from being human. Don't let your hurt hurt you. Don't let your hurt hurt others. Use your hurt to help others. And let your hurt identify you with Jesus Christ by having the right attitude and the right outlook and making a difference in somebody else's life. Don't live in an open wound. Let Jesus Christ help you. Say, preacher, you don't know what's been done to me. No, but I know what was done to Jesus. And you know what he said? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Joseph said, you meant it unto me for evil, but God meant it unto good. Hmm? Can I say this? Hurt hurts. But it's what you choose to do with your hurt that will identify you with being truly a Christian or a fraud and a counterfeit. Too many waller in their hurt and they dishonor Jesus. Yes, wounds hurt. Yes, 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 misjustices are done. Yes, much of what we go through is undeserved. You've got two choices. You can waller in it or you can let God help you through it. So how do you do that, preacher? He gave you the Word of God and the indwelling Holy Ghost to propel you over anything this world can throw at you. Yet most people, when they're hurt, they ignore the Word of God and they grieve the Holy Ghost in their life. Don't let your hurt hurt you. When you get hurt... Get in His Word. Get on your knees. Ask the Lord through the Holy Ghost to help you. He is our comforter. He is our peace. He is our hope and our joy. And ask Him to work out what has been put in. Because there is a bomb of Gilead, friend. Don't let your hurt of yesterday define you today. Accept God's healing today. And go on and help somebody else in the midst of their hurt. You can. Through the power of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost that lives in you. Don't let your hurt define you. Hmm? Some of the greatest human stories are those of people who have been dealt bad hands, but they did not let that define them. They rose above it and went on. To do something that others thought wasn't possible. Amen. So don't let whoever hurts you defeat you by controlling your life through the hurt. Let Jesus Christ give you victory and let Him define you as truly being your Lord and Savior. So tonight, if you're hurt, I got good news. You don't have to be. Jesus can help you. If you've been hurt, hallelujah, welcome to the club. Now go out there and help somebody else. You'll find your hurt gets smaller and smaller and your scars get smaller and smaller when you quit dwelling on them and you strive to be a blessing and a minister to someone else in the midst of their hurt. So it's up to you. You can be hurt or you can be one who was hurt. I'd rather be one who was hurt than one who is hurt. It's up to you. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come. Thank God that he helped you through your hurt. Maybe you're not tonight you're hurt. You need to come and ask God for some help. Maybe you want to come and ask him to show you somebody you can be a blessing to to help them in the midst of their hurt. I don't know. But I know his grace is sufficient. And I don't know that he wants to help his people tonight. So you just find God as they're picking out a song. Let's pray, Father. I'm glad the God of the Bible is greater than any hurt we'll face. And God, you took our hell and our hurt and everything that we'd ever face to the cross of Calvary. 
God, you became victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and over everything that we would face. You were tempted in all points like as we are, yet you were without sin. So, Father, I pray you'd help your people, help them in the midst of their hurt to see a Savior that is greater than their hurt. Maybe somebody here tonight just really hurt. I pray you'd help them. Maybe somebody here tonight, Lord, that you can use the hurt they have faced to benefit somebody else. Lord, give them that unction, that inspiration to do so. Help us tonight, Lord, to lean on thine understanding and help us, Lord, to acknowledge you and let you direct our paths. Well, Father, have your will and way in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.